This is a fairly typical C4 section B question on vectors. It's about a tent. So if you've been camping before, it would help to actually imagine a tent and then you might be able to picture what's going on a little bit more clearly. So we've got lengths in metres and the OXY plane is horizontal. So if you imagine the field that you've pitched your tent on, then you could draw axes on the ground, your X and Y axes, and then your Z axis would be pointing vertically upwards. So your ground sheet, the part of the tent that would be on the floor, would be A, B, C, F. So that shape would be on the ground. And then up at the top of the tent, we've got E and we've got D. Now if we look at the Z coordinates, E has a Z coordinate of 3, D has a Z coordinate of 2. So the point E is actually higher up than the point D. So in part one we're asked to find the length of the ridge of the tent DE. So we're looking for the length of this part here. So this is where we just use Pythagoras in 3D. So the length of DE, we're looking for the difference between the X coordinates. So we've got an X coordinate of 6 and an X coordinate of 1. So the difference between those would be 5. And we're going to square that and add it to the difference between the y coordinates squared and actually both y coordinates are zero so that's a distance of zero in between them and finally then we've got the difference between the z coordinates so that's three minus two would be the difference between the z coordinates and that is squared so if we square and add those that's five squared is 25 plus one squared is one so we get that de is the square root of 26 now we may choose to evaluate this and perhaps round to three significant figures. So 5.09, we look at the next digit to see if we need to round up, and we do. And in fact that means the 9 will round up, so in fact we're going to end up with 5.10. And our units were metres, and we should put in brackets the rounding we've done, which was three significant figures. So now we also need to find the angle that this makes with the horizontal. So if we spot it, there's a nice easy way to do this. Now DE lies in the OXZ plane. So what does that mean? If we had a kind of piece of paper that was standing up vertically on the floor, then on the paper our ridge would be going exactly through that paper. It's in a kind of plane there, so it wouldn't be coming out in front or behind that piece of paper. So the Y coordinate being zero means that both E and D are vertically above the X axis because the Y coordinate is zero, so they don't move kind of backwards in towards the tent that way or towards us in the tent this way. Now, if we have spotted that then, we can think of the horizontal as being the OX direction and we can actually just draw quite a simple right angle triangle. What we would have then is the point E is at the top of this triangle and the point D is at the bottom of this triangle. Then the OX direction is going across the base there. Here's our right angle. So we have the difference in height, difference in the Z coordinates of 1 and the distance in the X direction of five units across. Now we can use our basic Sokotoa there. We have the length of a side that's opposite the angle that we're looking for and we've got the length of the side that's adjacent. So opposite and adjacent, that's when we use tan. So the inverse tan of one over five, which we can evaluate on the calculator and round. So in this case, we've got 11.3. The next digit is a zero, so we don't need to round up. So that will be 11.3 degrees, which has been rounded to three significant figures. If we hadn't spotted that way of doing it, there is another method that we could use. So if we look at the horizontal, that's parallel to the OX axis. And if we were to go perpendicular to that, then we could find the angle between ED and that perpendicular line. So that would give us this angle which I've labelled as theta. Now that would be the angle between the ED and the vertical, but we wanted between ED and the horizontal. So vertical and horizontal make a 90 degree angle between them, 
So once we'd found that angle that I've labelled theta, we'd actually need to do 90 minus theta to get that. So the reason for doing this was because saying the horizontal, well, the horizontal doesn't really have a vector, and it's a bit like when we want to find an angle between planes. We don't find the angle between the planes, we find the angle between their normal vectors. So it's a similar idea to that. So what we could do to get the normal to the horizontal, this vector that's the green one that I've labelled, well, that vector would have 0 in the x direction and 0 in the y direction. It only goes in the z direction. So that would be the vector 0, 0, 1. So we can find the angle between this direction 0, 0, 1 and the direction of ED. So to get the direction of ED, we use D minus E. And then we can use our rule about cos of an angle. So to get this ED, we've got um, D, which is 6, 0, 2, minus E, which is 1, 0, 3, giving us the direction of 5, 0, minus 1. Then cos theta is the dot product of those two directions divided by the lengths of those two vectors. So the working for this will be gone over later in the question when we do this for another part. But what we're really doing is 5 times 0 plus 0 times 0 plus minus 1 times 1, which gives us minus 1. And in the denominator, the lengths of these vectors are calculated using Pythagoras. So 5 squared add 0 squared add minus 1 squared gives us 26. And 0 squared add 0 squared add 1 squared gives us 1. So cos theta is minus 1 over root 26, giving 101.3 degrees. So 90 minus theta, if we put that theta substituted in place, that's 90 minus 101.3, that gives us minus 11.3 degrees. So that's the angle that we're actually looking for here. It's come out as a negative, as if it's finding this one in the negative direction, but the size of the angle is what we want. So the angle between ED and the horizontal is 11.3 degrees. We need to show that the vector i minus 4j plus 5k is normal to the plane through a, d and e. So we're looking at a plane that would have a, d and e in it, and we're looking for a vector that's normal to that whole plane. Now it's enough actually just to say the vector would be normal to two vectors within that plane, so we could use a, e and e, d for example. So if we say that this vector um, using the coefficients of i, j and k, we've got 1, minus 4, 5, we'll call that vector n, then we need to show that the dot product of n and de and of n and ae is 0. Having a dot product of 0 would mean that n is perpendicular to both those vectors, therefore it would be perpendicular to the plane through a, d and e. So, starting off with then, um, we're looking for the directions, so the direction of DE, we can do the point D minus the point E, so 6, 0, 2, minus 1, 0, 3, giving 5, 0, minus 1, and then dotting that with the normal. So when we do the dot product, we're looking for the 1 multiplied by 5 plus minus 4 multiplied by 0 plus 5 multiplied by minus 1. So multiplying the x components, the y components and the z components and adding together those three parts to give, uh, we have 5 and 0 and minus 5, so that gives 0, which is what we were hoping for. We repeat the process finding AE, it ends up being 6, 4, 2, then the dot product of n with AE, so that's the 1 minus 4, 5, dotted with 6, 4, 2, also gives us 0. Therefore, we can say that i minus 4j j plus 5k is normal to the plane through ADE. Hence, find the equation of this plane. So, hence means we can use what we've just done. So, we know we have a normal vector, 1 minus 4, 5. And we know that an equation of the plane is r dot n minus a dot n equals 0, where n is the normal vector, and this vector r is the generic vector x, y, z. So r dot n just means that we're going to use our 1 minus 4, 5, the components of the normal vector, as the coefficients of x, y, and z. 
so we've got 1x minus 4y plus 5z, then we have minus a dot m. Now this a can be any point in the plane. So for example, 0 minus 4, 0, I could use the point that's actually called a, that's a point in the plane. So doing that dot product, here it is over here, a dotted with m, so we've got 0 multiplied by 1 plus minus 4 multiplied by minus 4 plus 0 multiplied by 5, so that gives us 16. So an equation of the plane is x minus 4y plus 5z minus 16 equals 0. I could write this with the 16 on the other side of the equals, so x minus 4y plus 5z equals 16. Either way will be fine. Now, we're also asked in this question to find the value of a given that b lies in this plane. So b is this point over here, 8 minus a, 0. So if that lies in the plane with this equation, we can simply substitute the coordinates of b in place of x, y and z and find out what a is. So if we do that, then the x component of b was 8 minus 4 times the y component, which is minus a, plus 5 times the z component of 0, minus 16 equals 0. So rearranging that, we end up with a equals 2. So on to the last part of the question. First, verify that the equation of the plane BCD is x plus z equals 8. So verify means that this is a straightforward thing we can do without having to really do much in the way of calculating things. So we need to show that the coordinates of B, C and D fit the equation of the plane x plus z equals 8. So we can just do this for each coordinate. So B was the point with coordinates 8, minus 2, 0. Remember that we were given that as minus A and we found out in the previous part that A was 2. So substituting those in place, we get x plus z is now 8 plus 0, which is equal to 8, which is what we needed it to be. Doing the same for the other coordinates, c was 8, 2, 0, and 8 plus 0 again equals 8, so that fits. And finally, d had coordinates 6, 0, 2, so our x plus z is going to be 6 plus 2, which again equals 8 as required. Therefore, the equation of the plane is x plus z equals 8. Hence, find the acute angle between the planes ABDE and BCD. So here we've got that word hence again. So we can use what we've just done. So the equation of the plane BCD. So we've got the equations of both planes that we're looking for. And in fact, to find the angle between planes, we don't really do it directly. What we want to do is find the angle between the normals to those planes. Given that we have the equations of both of them, though, that's a nice easy thing. We've got the normals to the planes. So ABDE has the normal of 1 minus 4, 5, which was given in part 2. So then we just need the normal for the plane BCD. Now, the normal for this plane is just the coefficients of x, y, and z in the equation. So we've got 1x, we don't have any y's, and we've got 1z. So the normal for BCD is quite simply 1, 0, 1. Now we can use our cosine formula. So cos theta, to get the angle between two vectors, it's the dot product of those two vectors divided by the lengths of those two vectors multiplied together. So a bit of calculation here then, we've got the dot product, so we're doing 1 times 1 plus 0 times minus 4 plus 1 times 5, so that gives us 6, and then we need the lengths of the vectors to go in the denominator. So for 1, 0, 1, we've got 1 squared add 0 squared add 1 squared, square rooted, giving us root 2, and for 1 minus 4, 5, we've got 1 squared, we've got minus 4 squared, we've got 5 squared, add those together on square root, we've got root 42. So if we put all of those in position, then to get theta, we're going to want the inverse cos of the dot product divided by the product of those lengths. So theta is going to be the inverse cos of 6, which is our dot product that we found, divided by the product of the lengths, which was root 2 multiplied by root 42. So we can evaluate that on the calculator uh, just make sure that we're in degrees here, so check that the calculator is in degrees mode, and then just check for rounding. 
So if we're doing 3 sig fig, the standard thing, that's 49.1. We look at the next digit, which is a 0, so we don't need to round up. So our final answer will be 49.1. Uh, we do have units, which are degrees, and that's been rounded to three significant figures.